large in part, 75% of all strength conditioning coaches and personal trainers are working with this middle group. And the way that you think about intermediates is that we have to know what a beginner prescription is and an advanced prescription because then we'll find that gray area which is called intermediate. So for the intermediate prescription, in comparison for the beginner, we're going to say things like 1.5 to 2 years plus, right, in, in experience. We're going to say that uh, function um, is there. We're going to say that we're looking at right now advanced assessment protocols. They know movements now, so the complexity is increasing. These are some of the characteristics that we're starting with now. So if we want to write that program design for them, remember for the beginners, the characteristics that went into it was the reps and sets and rest time all varying. And now for intermediate, we can take a middle ground on that, that we're going to have some variety in the reps, sets, rest time. So we're going to go from this high end to low end and in between variations because we have to get really specific based upon the client before we can do like a specific prescription. But for generalized statements, you're going to do variations. So if a rep range for a beginner was 12 to 15, now you can see a rep range for uh, an intermediate person is going to be 10, 7, 4. Do you see that? If this is 12 to 15 times 3 for a one arm row, now we're going to do 10, 7, 4 per arm for three sets for a one arm row. So now we're, we're going away from the beginner and we're going into some of the principles involved here as to what a program design should be for an intermediate. So the intensity is also increasing a little bit. So if, if we knew that the uh, beginner one, remember the beginner was A1 to D2 that we wrote as to what it might look like, then now the, uh, then for intermediate it may be like this, A1, A2, B. Because the person is past the point where they're doing volume and repetition of exercise, they just may want to do something like a uh, dumbbell walking lunge, going to take care of that certain scenario, and then a weighted dip, and then they're going to do an uh, upper body uh, pressing activity, supplementary, okay? And then a core piece. So you can see the prescription now, because these guys may do five sets here, five, two, and two. Dumbbell walking lunge. Uh, 12 steps times 5 sets, rest 90 seconds based upon the repetitions, weighted dip, they're going to do um, 6, 5, 4, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sets, rest 90 seconds. The reason why it's 90 seconds, the rep range is somewhat moderate for intermediate, and remember it's 90 and then 6, whatever times the tempo, so let's say another 30 seconds, 90, that's a minute 20, and another 90 seconds is 210 seconds, which is three and a half minutes. So they're getting three and a half minutes between the two of them. Upper body press, it's going to be single arm, and we're going to go back and forth, right, left, rest, right, left, rest, right, left, rest, and then a core activity, FLR on rings or some kind of side bridge or something that's a little more advanced. Now we're starting to throw in a little bit more complex movements. On another day, we may want to involve, you know, technical movements, right? So we'll do an A1, A2 power snatch with a weighted dip, let's say for example, okay? So now it's a little bit more complexity, which is not going to be seen in the beginning weight training program. And we may do triple pairings now. We may go A1, A2, A3, where they'll do a back squat, and then it's going to be another back squat drop set, and then it's going to be a chin up. Then they're going to rest and come back up again. So this is set for, this is okay for an intermediate uh, person now because their nervous system is starting to get developed enough that they can play with that. Whereas it's not going to be in a beginner weight training protocol. Now remember, if the intensity increases, let's say on this specific day, with 12 steps um, of five sets for the lunges, you know, two days later, if this was Monday, two days later, it's going to be tough to repeat these same kind of activities. So now you start seeing that it's possibly only on Monday and Thursday, twice a week, in which we're going to be able to get this same kind of protocol in, okay, in terms of body parts and, and the kind of functional training that we're doing. So if that one person, for example, uh, in their assessment, they needed to get to the dumbbell split squat, okay, so level three and four of uh, single leg activities, 
then we may want to do Monday, Thursday priority of single leg work. And if we did Monday, Wednesday, Friday like the beginner, that's too much volume relative to the intermediate. Because remember, the intensity of the work done is higher now. Because they can do more sets and they can also put more intensity into the set based upon holding on to weights. So therefore, we're only going to do two of those. Which may, remember, if it's only Monday and Thursday, guess what we're doing on Tuesday and Friday? We're doing two more sessions, which are different than these. So maybe on Tuesday and Friday, we do posterior chain, upper body push, and some other core exercise, which complement this. Therefore, we go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and we rest Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, our off days. And if you use those principles for the bulk of people that are going to be doing weight training protocols, then you're going to get success with those folks in your training program.